$23,023 to the race winner. Everybody but Kyle Reinhardt, who's trying to cash in on an extra nine grand from the Durst dice roll from inside of row number five, originally on the lineup. He'll actually end up starting six, so his job's a little bit easier. Here we go, Kyle Larson and Hunter Schoenberg on the front row, ready to duke it out for 35 laps. Thunder on the hill at Grandview, the High Limit Sprint Car Series is green. Oh, Hunter good job. Look at him go. Hunter gets out of the gun. They're all trouble, middle of the pack. Four wide in turn number two. We got a car upside down in one. And that is not what Hunter Schoenberg wanted to see. He got a great jump. Yes, he did. And see the steering wheel coming off it's of like the car. Freddie Raymer. Yeah, I believe it is Freddie. It is Freddie Raymer over there. The steering wheel already came off the 51. Boy, this has not been the night that I think a lot of us expected him to have just as never really found his footing and then got tangled up over there in one and two as they all kind of funneled down there into the uh, into the tight confines of turn one. And if you're Hunter Schoenberg, you got to oh. be you got to be mad, you got to be mad about that. That was uh, yeah. it, that was exactly how you want to do it. Because the problem is Kyle ain't gonna let that no, happen he's not. twice. You know he's not. He is gonna he's gonna do something different yeah, that to won't make sure happen twice. make sure that Hunter does not get that jump. Replay on Flow Racing for those of you watching online as we see Freddie Raymer yeah, out of the race car. Say the same thing. Yep, Freddie out of the race car over there in turn one. And he's at the back here. And you see he kind of almost looked like he maybe got up over the berm there on the inside and it just turned over on him. So uh, there's some wing damage to the top wing there we can see. Yeah. Tough break. We'll try it again. 35 laps. Larson and Schoenberg setting the pace. RPM start to rise. Hunter was ready to go. I don't think that one's going to fly. I don't think so. Through one and two, and there's the and yellow. the yellows come on. <laughs> I think, did Kyle bait him into that one? <laughs> he may have been just trying to see how, uh, how aggressive Hunter was going to go. Well, like we discussed, Hunter knew that he yeah, was yeah. going to get no, two freebies. He, he knows he's got to he's got to make something happen to be creative here. But, but I would say he best not do it again. Yes, he, that uh, was his next time. That was his warning. That was his warning. So, uh, and that works out probably even better for Kyle now because I'd imagine he may be a little <laughs> little uh, little trigger happy or a little gun shy, I should say, to jump again. So, we'll see what happens here. We'll try it for the third time. Larson and Schoenberg much more even across this time. Hunter still had a nose out in front, but Larson got going quicker. Schoenberg trying to get to the high side and make it work side by side for the lead, but Larson clears him. Into three and four, Larson will bring him around for lap one. Here comes Justin Peck down to the inside of Hunter. Peck to second, Hunter back to third, Marks up into the fourth spot, Rico in fifth. For the top side through three and four, not the place to be as Schoenberg loses the spot. Larson goes up there though and able to turn it down the hill. Schoenberg maybe just got hung out a little bit. Battle for fourth behind him. Rico sweeps around the outside and slams the door on Marks for fourth and one's third from Hunter. Boy, he slammed it hard on Marks into oh, turn Oh, trouble, one two. turn two. One car around and Dusty another Zomer. one collected. Zomer and Cap Henry getting turned around over there. Dusty had the car turned around and Cap Henry coming around the bottom collected him and turned his car as well to bring out the caution. Just light contact there with from Henry, that red car on the left. Get a new ride for him. Now they're calling for a hook, I heard him say. So maybe it was harder contact than we initially thought. And maybe for Dusty Zomer, they're kind of pointing at him like he's the one that maybe needs some help here. Cap Henry gonna either circle around or drive off the track and go to the work area. And he's going to the work area. Probably gonna check it out, make yep. sure everything okay on the front end of that car. Have to go to the back anyway, so may as well check it out. And indeed, a hook coming for Dusty Zomer. We get a look at it on flow. Oh yeah, the right front knocked out of the 3J, which is where Cap kind of ran into, ran into it and ran him over when he was spinning there. Yeah, yeah, guys, he quickly went up the ramp. They wanted to stop in the work area just to make sure it's something like a toe or something. It, the, the, the left front was kind of 
caught up underneath the front wing a little bit. And obviously we saw the damage to the right front. They're trying to see if they have something to quickly repair it because they're still waiting on getting a push truck, I believe, for uh, the 2MD, the Mark Daly entry for Cap Henry. And Cap was just shaking the steering wheel trying to figure out uh, if he could drive it back. So that's kind of the story going on there. Don't forget uh, this ride for Cap Henry, brand new for Dusty Zomer, a heat race winner for the first time, last time out at an Eagle. So uh, the progression's been there, but certainly a tough end or a tough break to uh, both of those drivers here today. We'll see if they can get the 2MD to a push truck, but uh, of course, you know, time's starting to tick here and the hourglass is getting empty. They got Cap fired off on the back stretch, so still waiting uh, to see and hear a report about Dusty Zomer. Don't think he's gonna make it. One to go signal given, everybody's choose, everybody's chosen, I should say. Justin Peck, who runs second, chose the outside lane. It almost worked on the initial start for Schoenberg. It, you know, it, it did work, I guess, on the on the first one, and then Hunter almost made it work when we went green. So, not a bad option here. Before everybody gets going, Larson, the leader, 33 to go. Schoenberg, Abreu, and Brent Marks, the top five. Off of turn four, Kyle gets a good jump on him as they come to the green. Kyle Larson will lead him into turn number one by five car lengths. Justin Peck in the second spot, battle for third now. Rico to the outside of Hunter Schoenberg down the back straightaway. Peck in the outside lane kind of backed up that whole lane on the restart. Allowed Avery to get by Schoenberg, or at least get set up to go by Schoenberg. So he goes to third. Hunter's back to fourth. Chase Randall runs fifth as Larson starts to scamper away out front. Good battle deeper in the packs, though, inside the top ten. Kyle Reinhardt racing for position. Brent Marks and Corey Elias in battle for position down the front straightaway as well. That's the race for the sixth spot. Marks has it. Elias in the seventh position. Reinhardt eighth, side by side for ninth. Battle back towards the front for the fourth spot. Schoenberg backsliding to the front bumper of Chase Randall as they work into one and two. Everybody's moved to the high side at this end of the racetrack. Back through three and four, Larson and Peck are on the high side. Everybody through the top five has migrated up there as well as it starts to get cleaned off. Brent Marks now looking at Chase Randall side by side. Marks to the bottom of Randall. He'll slide up across turn two to take the spot away. Chase stays right there with him. Two car lengths back down the back straightaway. Put Brent Marks up into the fourth spot. One car, the lap machine. Uh, I think it's Austin Bishop starting to smoke in front of the leaders here as they are already into the thick of lap traffic. Peck keeping Larson honest here as they go through the slower traffic and Abrews closed in as well as the top three all run just a couple car lengths apart. It's gonna be interesting because we've got lap cars running both lines on the racetrack, so Kyle will have to move around. Justin Peck will have to move around as they work off at turn number four. Larson up behind lap cars, goes to the bottom of one, slides back to the cushion in turn two, can't get by the lap cars as they work down the back straightaway. That's the lap car, Jake Parkland, that Larson's trying to dispose of. Peck wasn't able to capitalize, but he draws right to the rear bumper of Parkland, looking for Lane to move by him and keep Larson in his sights. Larson able to get away. Abreu has closed on Peck in the race for the second spot down the back stretch. Lap traffic of factor, now Justin Peck getting by Parkland in turn number four. Rico will come along with him as they work down the front straightaway. Your leaders in heavy, heavy traffic as they work into turn number two. Larson threads the needle. Here comes Justin Peck down the back straightaway, trying to close in again in three and four. Ryan Taylor, Kyle Moody, the next two cars going a lap down. Abreu, now we go Caution. yellow. One turn stop two. in the middle of one and two. Ryan Timms stopped facing the wrong way at the exit of turn number one. Did a 360, we are hearing. so. It's a penalty either way, but he stops, so he'll go to the back. With 24 laps to go, and that may have been a bless blessing for the leaders as they tried to work through some of that slower traffic. So Ryan Timms was in the 10th spot as they wait for a push over there. You're right, Dylan, I think the leaders are happy now. They'll have a bit of a clear racetrack for five or six laps anyway as we get lined back up here again. Think of your Peck or Abreu though, you actually probably prefer the prefer traffic because yeah. yeah. it keeps keeps Larson close, doesn't allow him to just get out and, and rip off some laps. But you're right, Tony, we'll be back in it soon enough as we see a replay on Flow Racing here. And Tim's just kind of got up Lost and the yep, caught a slick spot and around it went right in front of traffic and everybody that Danny Dietrich yeah. going way to the outside there, almost got to the outside wall and turned two to miss him. So good heads up driving there by those guys outside the top 10 in the middle of the pack. Choose Cone back out. 
We'll choose right here. See if anybody's minds have changed after the last restart. Pet goes back to the top. And Evan Borden, the first one to go out of line, if you will. Yep. Choose the high side. Lights out. We'll come back to green with 24 to go. Larson Peck, Avery Schoenberg, and Brent Marks, the top five. Nice jump for Larson. Back to green. Abreu not wasting any time as well as he forces Peck up off the bottom groove. That's the race for the second spot, trying to get the power down. Peck crosses it back over. Race for the runner-up spot into turn three. Larson starting to get away. They're wheel to wheel for second. Good battle for the second spot. Rico takes the second spot away from Justin Peck now. He'll ride third. Brent Marks running fourth. Battle for the fifth position. Corey Eliason. He'll go to the outside of Hunter Schurenberg. Eliason up to fifth. Hunter Schurenberg sixth. Chase Randall in the seventh spot. Here comes Casey Kane. Wow, Casey Kane on from. the move. He started 19th. Out of the B main. So that is a great run for Kane. Great run for Eliason as well. He's been one of the early movers here. Started 12th in the original lineup. Runs fifth right now with Brent Marks in his sight in fourth. Just ahead of him as they work into one and two. Kyle Larson beginning to stretch out his lead over Rico Abreu in that second spot. Danny Dietrich, another car on the move. He and Kyle Reinhardt battled out. They tap wheels there in turn three and four. That's the race for the ninth and tenth spot. Dietrich has the ninth spot, Reinhardt's ten. Casey Kane is closing in on Hunter Schoenberg as well. He came out of the B main as they work out a three and four. That'll be the race for the sixth spot if Kane's able to get to the back bumper of Schoenberg. Hunter Schoenberg riding in that sixth position right now. Kyle Larson pulling away. He'll find his way through lap traffic. But Casey Kane, as you mentioned, Dylan, the guy that has probably moved the farthest here early on with 18 to go. Schoenberg in front of him starting to move around. Hunter went to the bottom there. We get the cross flags halfway home for Larson, who is, was getting away from Avery. But Rico's turned the wick up here in just in time as lap traffic Oh, moves. trouble for Justin Peck. He's slowing down the back straightaway. Man, that is just the story of their season, it seems like. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh. yellow, yellow, yellow. Tough break for Justin Peck, running third and slows to a stop just at the entry to turn three on the low side of the racetrack. And Larson kind of bailed out again there by the yellow before he got to traffic. But Rico's been really good on the restarts. And we'll see what they do with Justin Peck here. Took him out of gear, and he's going to either head to the work area or call it a night. Let's see what Rico does here. I'm presuming he's going to go to the high side. He's been been good. Oh, they swapped. Rico goes to the bottom, Larson to the top, and Justin Peck not going to get time because we're past halfway by a lap. So lights are out here. Peck's not going to make it. He'll need a yellow before we complete a lap if he wants to rejoin the field. So the leaders swap lanes here. We go, we go yellow. That may be the break Peck needs. Oh, now we're lights out. All right, we're coming to green for real. 17 to go. Larson, the leader, outside the front row. On the gas early. Leaves Rico scrambling as we go back to green. Rico gets out on Kyle, but Kyle's strong on the bottom, run. slides up across turn two to take the lead back. Here comes Rico down the back straightaway. Reeling in your leader, two car lengths back. Your race will be for the lead. Rico got such a great run off the high side of turn number four and just sailed it in there, and he's trying to check out and leave the guy who's won the last three high limit sprint car races. Larson going backwards. Brent Marks to his inside. That's the race for second. Give it to Marks in turn three. Brent Marks to the outside now as Kyle tries it back on the inside. They're wheel to wheel in the turn number one. Brent Marks rides the high line, tries to get a run on Kyle again. Kyle by a nose wing now, half a car length into turn three. Larson able to edge back in front, but Marks turns down the hill as Larson tries to find some moisture at the exit of four. He finds it for now, able to hold Marks off for second. Rico's gotten away from these two as they start to battle and continue to battle. Eliason has moved to fourth, and Casey Kane again from the back runs in the fifth spot. Danny Dietrich now up into the sixth position as well. Cap Henry seventh, Hunter Schoenberg back to eighth. Chase Randall falls to ninth, and Kyle Reinhardt in tenth. Yellow coming out, Ryan Tim. And that's two for Tim's, and he's backed against the three and four wall this time. 
How about that, folks? Are there any Rico Abreu fans here? <laughs> Rico getting up on the wheel. He's talked all year just about wanting to win one of these races. And he's been so close. And he just went up there and took it. Made the right call on the choose cone restart. And Mark's got around Larson briefly there, of course, for the second spot. I think timing and scoring is going to allow Larson to hold on to that second spot. So 13 laps to go. And that's the second yellow Tim's cause. I believe he's done for the event. Two spin rule here. And we've got 13 to go. So we got three more laps of the choose cone before that goes away. Choose Cone is out, so we're going to choose this time. And now Rico, as the leader, has the important choice to make. Where I don't know if you if you choose where you want your car to be or where you don't <laughs> want Larson to be. So Rico goes back to the bottom. That's what worked for him last time. So lights are out, coming to green. 13 to go. Rico to the inside with Kyle Larson on the outside. Brent Marks right behind him, Corey Eliason, Casey Kane up into the fifth spot. Brent Marks looking for a good start. He's going to follow Rico around the bottom off of turn four. Green flag waves, good start by Rico Abreu. He'll pull away from down into turn number one. Larson goes to the bottom to block the inside line. Here comes Corey Eliason now, mounts a charge on Brent Marks. Larson not able to repay the big turn one slider that Rico gave him on the last restart. And Abreu's starting to get away as they cross the line. The gap already almost a second over he and Larson. Battle for third. Danny Dietrich rolling the bottom here. He's reeled in Brent Marks, and that's the race for the bottom step on the podium. Boy, a four-car battle there. Larson, or excuse me, Casey Kane took a look there but couldn't get there. Slid up the racetrack and lost two spots. Dietrich now closing in on Brent Marks. Eliason tries again to put a charge on the top of the racetrack. Ten laps to go this time by. Rico Abreu sees that as he crosses the line ahead of Kyle Larson. Marks his third, battles for fourth. Dietrich moved by Eliason, but Eliason, one of the lone cars on the top ten, utilizing the high lane through one and two as he tries to battle back and get by Dietrich. Cap Henry working on Casey Kane in turn number three. He'll go to the inside, but Kane able to hold him off. Back up in front of him. Dietrich continuing to fight for all he can to hold on to that fourth spot. Eliason down the back shoot, looks to the outside. Dietrich slides up to block. Dietrich's got that thing set strong on the right rear as he enters the corner, and it's worked for him. He's charged from the back of the field just about to, well, inside of row seven to now inside the top five. A nice run as we look back to the leaders. Rico Abreu, that gap is getting a little bit smaller as we get seven to go right here. Larson's there, but he's got to get closer if he wants to make a move. Kyle Larson closing the gap now, down the back straightaway to three car links, now two car links. They're nearly nose to tail. Off of turn number four, Rico Abreu continuing to show the way, but here comes Kyle Larson to the inside. When does Larson strike? He's got the bottom working. That's a little better as the top side starts to get a long way around and slicks off. There's Larson side by side, race for the lead as they'll come to five to go this time by. Abreu who sees him, gets in the gas, and pulls away again by five car lengths. Kyle couldn't clear him. He'll settle back into second. Brent Marks still watching him in third. Down the back straightaway, Rico trying to put 10 car lengths on him with lap traffic ahead. They're going to meet traffic right here in the closing five laps. And Rico did a smart thing there. He tried the bottom of one and two. He saw Larson down there. He's not hitting it quite as well as Kyle was, but he's making it work for now as the gap grows again to about six or seven car lengths as they work off the corner. Three to go and lap traffic looming for Abreu. Lap cars on the bottom. Lap cars on the top of the racetrack. Rico Abreu has to make a choice. Down the back straightaway, Rico sizing up the lap cars. He'll go to the high side of the racetrack. Larson and Marks both follow him in. Abreu gets a lane as the lap cars move to the bottom. Now Rico does as well. He hasn't run it quite as consistently as Larson has, so he's still learning where he needs to go. Larson goes to the high side through one and two. They're both to the high side through three and four. White flag in the air for Rico Abreu. Final time as Rico Abreu races into turn one. Kyle Larson trying to size him up one more time. Down the back straight within five car lengths. Dietrich held up in traffic, but through three and four. Rico Abreu on the top. Checkers in the air, and Rico Abreu wins the high limits at Grandview. 
Kyle well, Larson comes home second, and Brent Marks puts it on the podium in the third spot. Danny Dietrich and Corey Eliason, the top five, Casey Kane, Cap Henry, Kyle Reinhardt, Hunter Schoenberg, and Lance DeWeese, the top 10. Tyler Ross, Ryan Smith, TJ Stutz, Devin Borden, Ryan Taylor, and Chase Randall. But boy, Dylan, this, what a battle there for the lead in the last five laps. The win streak is over for Kyle Larson. Rico Abreu finally checks the box and gets his first high limit sprint car series win and he had to fight for it and earn it every single lap. He won here in Pennsylvania Speed Week last year and backs it up with another strong performance all night long as they head off the racetrack to scales first before we have a chance to talk with our top three. Rico's in victory lane and Chris Wilner's there to greet him. The whole crew down here as Rico climbs out of the race car. What a week for that young man. Picked up an elusive Williams Grove win over the weekend, but says, I want to win a high limit race. Well, tonight he finally does it. $23,000 to Rico as it's an absolute party in victory lane, but he's coming up top race fans. Rico Abreu wins at Grandview. The confetti, the fireworks, and Rico Abreu is finally a high limit Sprint Car Series winner after back-to-back -back runner up finishes. I can't imagine the sense of excitement, but also relief. His pup comes to visit Victory Lane, will let Rico get the rest of his safety equipment off, and then come down here in front of this check. What does it mean to you after all of the runner-up finishes, the questions of when are you going to be, you beat Kyle Larson heads up tonight on a really good technical racetrack. What does this moment feel like? Is it relief, is it excitement, or is it maybe a little bit of both? Uh, just excitement. Um, you know, it's uh, that was just good racing. And I, on the start, I just got into the grease and turned a little bit too early, but my car was unbelievable. Uh, that's tough racing, catching lap traffic. The car kind of changes a little bit, but the track kept getting slicker and slicker, and I could gain a little grip off of turn two, uh, running up high, and I knew that uh, I was getting dirtier dirty in the middle, and I could hear Kyle coming. So it was uh, just a matter of when to move around and, and just race and break momentum and uh, judge a little bit of pace off lap traffic. But unbelievable job for this team. Ricky Warner, Zach, Brady Forbrook, uh, you know, Brandon's here and, and Bob's here tonight. Uh, you know, Pennsylvania residents. Uh, so it's just, uh, you know, hats off to these partners on this race car, um, you know, and all their belief in me and my ability to drive these cars. Um, you know, I've, from the day I turned uh, 16 years old and I wanted to be a race car driver, I, uh, you know, I, I put a lot of effort into this race and, and it's, uh, it's a passion of mine. So it's, it's important that, uh, you know, we're up here and these guys are getting to experience it. Um, Ricky Warner's the best crew chief in the world. So it's, uh, you know, it's important for me to, get him up here and my team and for them to experience the sensation of winning and especially beating um, you know the best driver in the world uh, it's uh, it's important to these guys and their beliefs and uh, and beliefs in themselves as as mechanics on these race cars that they they do their job at the highest level too we'll let you get the richmar wreath but rico walk me through the restart halfway through kyle had checked out for a little bit but what did you figure out where did you say okay this is my opportunity um i just started letting my car come to me um you know we knew we set this thing up for the end of this race and um you know i could maintain his pace on the longer runs as tire pressures came up and it was just uh it was important that i really pedaled it and on that restart um you know him choosing the outside i knew he was going to spin and i just had to make sure i didn't hit the grease down the front stretch and uh just at least try to break his momentum into turn one where we could race um but you, you have to be careful doing that because you let the guys behind you catch up and uh you know so it's it's important to set a touring pace once you get to the lead finally i know williams grove was a big one for you and, and you really soaked that in but to add your name now to a greg hodnick cup 
a, a racer we all respected, we all miss. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it's an unbelievable tribute, race tribute to Greg Hodnett. Uh, we won this last year at Pennsylvania Speed Week with Ricky, and uh, you know I knew how much the Hodnett ma family means to Ricky Warner and our team. Um, you know, and and just as I uh, developed as a race car driver. Um, you know, you learn the history of racing and how important of a person Greg Hodnett was um, and, and to the people that was involved in his race team over the years. Um, you know, there's a lot of history made there and uh, these races are, are becoming uh, crown jewel events that uh, we make sure we're important. We intend, we, it's important we attend them. All right, race fans, the party is officially started. Rico Abreu, High Limit Sprint Car Series winner here at Grandview. And while the celebration continues, just the roles reversed here at Grandview versus Eagle for Kyle Larson. Led the first half of this race, and then Rico got by you on the restart. What changed with the race car? Uh, not much. I just I thought you know, the, the restart before that, when I took the bottom, I had to pedal it all the way to exit, and, and I figured it got slicker down there, so I thought I could choose a top. It, it kind of had a nice moisture strip up top, and thought I could launch up there and just get my momentum built up earlier. and. Um, that wasn't the case, so uh, I thought I did get a good enough launch. I didn't have to worry about him. This is obviously why I went so high into one. I thought I could just get going, and uh, he cut a ton of distance and, and had the momentum, I think, down the front stretch from all the grip on the bottom. So that was just the, uh, the move of the race that cost me, but he did a good job executing it. And Then I, I thought when he was in front of me, he looked really good, but then you know, the last run, I was, I was actually, I don't know if I was better than him. I think just I was running lower, and, and I was catching him a lot, and one and two, and then even you know, off of four, I could uh, inch towards them. And then I ended up just pulling the trigger probably a lap too early there into three. I thought I had a good enough run on the back stretch. I could uh, maybe clear in front of him um, or at least get him up over the flat to uh, you know, miss, you know, kill his speed down the, you know, through four and down the front stretch. But uh, just didn't, didn't work out, but uh, had a lot of fun there. Again, Rico did a great job. He's been, uh, him and Ricky have been super good all year long. You know, I feel like I feel like he's been the all-around best, you know, car all year. I think we're right there. You know, Brad, Gravel, Carson, obviously they're they're good too. So uh, nothing to hang your head head about. You know, getting beat by Rico, especially at a, a bull ring like this. So um, had a lot of fun. Thanks to the crowd for coming out. Always a amazing uh, crowd here at Grandview. Um, love coming to Pennsylvania. So thank you guys, and uh, look forward to coming back here next year. Gotta ask you. I know the streak ends, but is there a little friend? It's gonna be something fun to you know as we finish. You got me? I, I wouldn't call it a, a rivalry at all. I, I, I enjoy Race Rico a lot, um, especially, you know, when he's, when he's on his A game like he is right now. He's uh, super aggressive, um, fun, to, fun to watch, um, but then also fun to race against and, and uh, makes you get up on the wheel. So I, I had a great time tonight. We've had some great battles, him and I, um, where I've come out you know, on top. So uh, I know he's been working really hard to uh, get in victory lane in the high limit series. So congrats, team, and uh, we'll just try and be a little bit better next time. All right, Kyle Larson comes up runner-up here this time as his streak of three straight wins ends. And rounding out the podium tonight, Pennsylvania's own the Myerstown Missile, Brent Marks. So we documented early, 19, make not now 20 times you've been here and haven't won. But what was the challenging part for you, especially when we got to some of that lap traffic, just trying to keep up with those two? Yeah, the, uh, that was an every race and um, got by Kyle at one point, but just wasn't able to quite, you know, stick it in front of him. So um, after that, he kind of seen the line I was running down here in one and two, and he moved down, and I just wasn't able to make the ground up that I, I was able to before. So all in all, we had a good car. I felt like we had a car to contend for the win there. Just, you know, things just didn't sort out or work out there throughout the race. And, um, you know, was gaining on them guys there at the, uh, the last few laps, and uh, some lap cars uh, just kind of ruined that there for me. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we were close again, but... Uh, that's okay. We'll get a win here one day, and uh, but it's great to be on the uh, the podium here tonight. Valiant effort. Hopefully, we'll see you at Kokomo. That's Brent Marks coming up in third here at Grandview, rounding out the podium. Second to Kyle Larson, and your winner, Rico Abreu, getting his first high limit sprint car win of the season. Dylan, Tony, boy, we we certainly got our money's worth yet again, and boy. It's it's fun to watch those two, Kyle and Rico. Anytime we get them together on the racetrack, I mean, it is worth every single penny. Now, my question is, and you guys probably know the answer, is Casey Kane the Tezos Hard Charger Award winner? I think he has to be. Yeah. That was our conclusion as well. Uh, 
And I guess it depends on where they credit him starting. If he's credited with originally starting 19th, which is what the lineup says um, he is. Regardless, great run for him. Uh, great run for some of the other guys we mentioned as well. So we'll go ahead and give you a full field rundown as the fireworks go off again. Rico Abreu, you're a winner. Kyle Larson and Brent Marks, the top three. Danny Dietrich, a nice run for him in fourth. Corey Elias in fifth. Casey Kane finishes sixth. Cap Henry, seventh. Kyle Reinhardt, eighth. Hunter Schoenberg, ninth. And Lance DeWeese is tenth. Tyler Ross comes home 11th, Ryan Smith 12th, TJ Stutz 13th, Devin Borden 14th, Ryan Taylor 15th, Chase Randall 16th, Ryan Tim 17th, Justin Peck 18th, Jake Kirkland 19th, and Kyle Moody 20th. And the final three finishers, Austin Bishop, Dusty Zomer, and Freddie Raymer. Well, we are in action in six short days at the Kokomo Speedway, Indiana's baddest bull ring. Can't wait to get there. We don't get to see wing cars there very often. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's Tuesday, August the 1st, so uh, next week. And, of course, you'll be able to catch all of the action live on Flow Racing. If you're not able to attend, we hope you are. But a uh, great prelude to everything that goes on uh, in Knoxville the next week yep. and, and a kind of a final tune-up for a lot of guys before uh, they, they head, to, uh, head to Iowa for a big week over there. And then, of course, uh, we'll be in action the week after that, August the 15th at the Houston Speedway. And then just a, a few more races left after that. Lernerville back here in Pennsylvania, September the 26th. That's the other $50,000 to win race. And then Bridgeport in New Jersey. And the season finale at the Lincoln Park Speedway on October 10th. That Bridgeport race is October 3rd. So we get three, three in a row to finish the year. Lernerville, Bridgeport, and Lincoln Park Speedway. Tony, final thoughts. Uh, I think we saw... going to be uh, excitement. We saw lots of passing and... Uh, you know, when, when you can see the leaders swap like we did tonight and, and within the last five laps, racing all the way to the checkered, um, just a great night and uh, super, super excited about getting to come back here. Absolutely. A lot of fun. And uh, as Kyle said, hopefully that uh, hopefully we're back here next year. It never disappoints here at Grandview. How about you? What's your final thoughts? Well, I loved it. I, and you and you took the words right out of my mouth. This place is, is always such a, a unique racetrack and it, it provides and produces such unique racing that I think I was expecting that and it delivered and I think that uh, we saw two of the best sprint car racers in the country right now put it all on the line and all, all on display right there and that's what it's all about that's what we uh, that's what we you know come to expect with the High Limit Sprint Car Series so it uh, doesn't get any better than that so that'll do it for us here on the Flow Racing team our thanks to Chris Wilner in the infield uh, our producer Tyler McKim the rest of our Flow Racing staff camera guys doing a great job all night getting us all the action and not missing a beat. So for Tony Bachoven, I'm Dylan Welch. We say thank you for joining us tonight here at Grandview, and thanks for joining us on Flow Racing. We'll see you at Kokomo next week on Tuesday for more High Limit Sprint Car Series racing.